I'm here tonight. Well, good evening. Good evening. As he previously said, my name is Eric Mulvane. I work out at Barry County Central Dispatch. Uh, I spent four years as a dispatcher, three years as a supervisor, and now I'm the network and systems administrator there. So I've been there for a while. I've probably talked to quite a few of you. I've been here for a couple of years. Um, been in this position for about three years now. So um, I do all the radio training for the Niner World Center. Uh, for some of the surrounding agencies, you know, at their request. So, this is just a quick overview of the Michigan's um, public safety communication system, also known as 800 megahertz radios. Mm -hmm. You guys probably won't say MPSCS or any of that, but here's an introduction for some of the stuff. Um, I'm gonna make you guys sign in, so we don't have to do that here. So, we're gonna learn some of the jargon. Uh, Obviously, most of you guys have talked on the radio. Not a lot changes from VHF to digital radio. Uh, just some minor little changes for you guys. So um, this is here for statewide interoperability. Um, everyone in this room looks old enough, except maybe you, to remember <laughs> September 11, 2001. People couldn't talk to each other. Interoperability is a big word that just says we can all talk to each other. The radio system, as designed, it covers 97% of mobile. And for mobile is your vehicle radio. So when they, when they talk about you know the coverage throughout the county, they're referring to mobile, not portable, on your head. Just so we kind of make that clear here. So they'll do portable requesting or portable testing on requests, but they don't do it often here. When they did some portable testing, here's just some of their marks. Um, you guys can see they, they pretty much just drove around and they did get out and move around some trails. But basically, because this isn't here in Barry County, when they drove around, you know, they just checked their portable radio and make sure it still worked, make sure it still works. So there's a couple factors that could be involved in that. But you see the amount of data points here. And each one has a number. And the number isn't associated with the location. It's the number of tests. So they did a lot of testing. Wow. This is Barry County. This is our current coverage map. We have one main tower in Barry County. There's over here at 5802. It's over Swift Road um, near Nashville. So you can see all this here, you know, like the blue, I apologize, I'm not good with colors. Um, the bluish that's there, that's I don't know, this is 98%. Um, that's fair weather. Um, the green is 95%. Everything that's white is definitely less. There's a couple other different variations there, some purples, um, some just different hues. But you guys can see up where you are, uh, there's some holes. Now this is, this is only measuring a couple of towers. So the Alto Tower that you guys probably hit on quite a bit as you head north towards 108, that is a directional tower. And the directional tower means all of its, all of its power and all of its transmitters are focused towards Alta because it's you know, more beneficial for them. So that's how they designed it. So we're looking at building a couple more towers. Uh, Director Stephanie Lehman, the 911 Center, has actually gotten funding to build two more towers. We just have to find the location. So those will hopefully help fill in all this area here and some of that area up there. So I know there's probably gonna be some headaches when switching from VHF, at least you can hear static, to digital, which is pretty much all or nothing. But we are working on it. And like I said, that's the existing coverage um, that we have today. So um, again, the system provides 97% mobile coverage. That's your in-car radio which is, you know, those change anywhere from 20 to 35 watts, depending on the setup that you have. Most of the Motorola radios that law enforcement has are about 35 watts. I'm not sure what you guys have, but it's probably similar. Um, portable, which are the small ones that you guys have, the small one that I brought with me, those are three watts. So when we're talking mobile coverage at 97%, that's at 35 watts, not three. 
as you can see here, 35 watts, we can reach the tower at three watts. It doesn't actually drop off like that. It, it fades, it just, you can't reach the tower. And if you can't reach the tower, you cannot talk to the person next to you. So uh, we have what's called a trunking radio system. This is just a brief overview of trunking. So we have, you know, multiple subscribers here, multiple subscribers here, but connecting them, you see, we, have, we only have four lines. That's because we're not, not everybody is gonna be talking at the same time. So we can share that resource. So um, it's more, more of an explanation on that. So the frequencies that Barry County has are on every single tower that we have in the county. So any time that we transmit on one of those frequencies, you guys can receive all of them. Like if we're talking to law enforcement, you guys can receive that frequency, but it's a digital radio system. So unless we're specifically saying, hey, talk to these radios, your radio just ignores it. So as we need to speak, uh, as we key up on the mic, what that does is it picks one of those frequencies and says, okay, you know, I got frequency A, I'm gonna talk now. As soon as we're done talking, we release the button, it drops frequency A. And then your reply could be on frequency B. As soon as you key up, it's on frequency B. As soon as you key up, it's back to frequency A. As soon as you key up, you don't respond to that, it could be back to frequency C. It doesn't matter. It just picks whatever's in the pool and it goes with it. Unlike you know, VHF radio where you have one set frequency for everybody to talk on. So, um, Again, it's a digital radio system, which is the difference of putting a computer in your radio. So like I said, it can receive that whole broad spectrum of frequencies, but it only listens to what the computer says to listen to. So, you know, it's, everything's just a computer. Um, and how you talk is still important. Just because this is a computer doesn't mean it can interpret what you mean. We need you to actually say what you mean. So, you know, if, if you sit here and you just kind of mumble into the radio, it can't clear that up for you. If we're mumbling into the radio, it can't clear that up for you guys either. You're not gonna be able to hear us any better because we have the same digital system out of dispatch. So, must be that time. Mm -hmm. um, even though, you know, it's a lot easier to get a VHF scanner, you can now get a digital scanner just on your cell phone. Scanner Buddy, 5 Radio, um, I forget, there, there's like Police Talk, there's a couple of others, they all scan the typical 800 megahertz digital frequencies. So they typically scan law enforcement, they're looking for that, but some of the fire frequencies are available if you look for them. So just keep in mind, whatever you say, just assume that it's monitored 24 seven, because you can also record from those apps, and that's what puts you on YouTube or the news. So, as far as the talk groups go, I'm not sure if you guys are just using, you know, 08 Fire, um, but we have, you know, a couple different tower structures um, as far as the radio groups go. So we have the local ones, you know, that could be your private talk groups, um, and that could be, I don't know if you guys have any fire ground channels that are digital or not, you know, there are some private event talk groups that we have. Those fall into the local. Countywide are what everybody monitors. That's 08 Fire. That's 08 P911 for law enforcement. You know, that falls into the countywide. And then there's statewide. And those ones are you know, statewide 5, um, statewide 1. Those ones are RLZs. Those are statewide channels. So you can talk to them from anywhere throughout the state. So if you're local, just stay within the county. Countywide, our talk frequencies are also on the surrounding county towers. So when you guys go up to Kent County, our frequency or our talk groups are on their towers as well. So just because you cross over into Caledonia, which you know is outside our county, doesn't mean you're going to lose your countywide channels. You will you lose the local channels because those are private talk groups for the county only. We don't load those up on any towers outside of the county, and that's to preserve space. 
So here's some of the zones. Now, zones on the radio, have you guys used 800 megahertz radios much? Getting into it. I'm sorry, I know you have, Patrick. <laughs> so in, the, in digital radios, you know, we have zones. And the different zones just denotes a different group of talk groups. So zone E are all of your statewides. And you have the statewide one through eight, and then we have RLZ one and two. Those are always programmed, those are always in zone E. Uh, zone F, you know, it's got um, some of your 8-call 90s, 8-tac 91s, and anything that says um, D after it is direct. These are your analog channels. So even though it's a digital radio, you can actually talk analog right to the person right next to you. So if you're out on a scene and you're within, let's say your guys are in flex fab. You know, how often can you get out on an 800 megahertz radio in flex fab? Not very often. There's too much metal. Uh, there's too much radio interference in there. They have a lot of machinery. You cannot get out on a digital radio very well. So if you switch, switch to a direct, then that basically turns it into a walkie-talkie mode. So you guys don't have to worry about your radio hitting the tower to talk to the person next to you. Instead, your radio just transmits like a walkie-talkie. You're limited to your three watt radius. So you can talk to the people outside of the truck, but you can't talk to the people who are in Hastings. You can't talk to dispatch on a direct unless you're out in Thornapple Manor or out by us. We won't be able to hear you. And even then, we don't monitor any of those channels. We would have to have um, a digital radio open with you know, 7TAC 52D open or 8TAC 92D. So just remember, anything that ends with a D, you don't have to hit the tower. That puts you in direct mode with everybody else. It's kind of within your three watt radius. What's your typical radius for three watts? For three watts? Yeah. Depending on all the structures nearby, you can get two miles. Um, you know, if, if there's not a lot, I mean, you might be able to get to the truck outside. If it's nice, open, flat ground, like almost none of Barry County is, you can get up to five miles. Go back to zone G. G is your event channels. If ever your radio goes into site trunking, you have to switch to G event one. Now, event one is only available in site trunking condition. Other than that, it's closed. But these event channels are by request only. So we have to call MSP, actually we call the MPSCS, and we say, hey, you know, we we'd like to get an event channel you know, can we get an event channel? Typically around here, we'll get zone I, which is all the way down here. So basically event one through 15 is G, event 16 through 30 is H, event 31 through 46, you know, it's typically law enforcement, but that's what we get around here usually. And then J is 47 through 62. So they kind of just took the blocks and split it up because you have 16 talk groups on, on your radio. You can flip the dial 16 times, that's it. So obviously you can't go up to 17. And yes, I realize that only goes up to 15. Slot number 16 in zone G is what's called dynamic regroup. So what that is, is if you guys are going somewhere, let's say in the middle of Kent County because they, they're they out or they have a scene that's large enough where they're just pulling anybody and everybody that they can, the MPSCS can load up the talk group that you guys are using under G event 16, or onto G, you know, and then switch location 16. So even if it's, you know, let's say, um, I don't know, 13 fire if you're down in Calhoun County, that's the only one that I remember at the moment. I think they might be 42 or 43 in Grand Rapids. I don't know what their numbers are, but if you have like one of their talk groups, then they can actually, as long as your radio is on and connected to the tower, they can program your radio from there. So you can actually communicate with the people who are there without having to switch to, you know, one of the event channels. Ideally, it's easier to switch to an event channel. Uh, that's something that, you know, their, their on-scene command will kind of set up. So this is the tower system as of 2017. Uh, they, they've probably built more than a dozen towers since then. You know, they built a couple a year. So 
You can kind of see how they're all interconnected here. Every single tower that's here is connected in one way, shape, or form. So I'm trying to think of which one they just built over here. But they just built one over here, and they built a couple up there. Yeah, this doesn't show the Alto Tower, which is right around in there. So those aren't on this map yet, but these are all broken up into zones. Barry County is special. We get two zones. You guys only have to worry about zone three. Down here, we have zone one. So that pretty much only covers like Assyria Township area, um, Johnstown Township, just that southeast corner of Barry County. So the zones will come important um, here in a couple of slides. Just keep in mind, zone three means you can talk to everybody in this zone on one main controller. So all the computers talk to each other. Well, there's one main computer that they talk to, and that's the one who talks to every other site. So how it typically works. Here. I know you guys all follow that. So it starts out with you guys keying up in um, one of your mobile radios, and it goes to the tower. And then the tower sends it out over microwave to the zone controller, which we're in zone three, so it goes to the zone three zone controller. And then it comes back to the, uh, to the microwave, which then will say, okay, yep, this radio is authorized to talk. They're looking for this talk group. Okay, I'm gonna transmit on this frequency. Here's the digital encoding for that talk group. And it'll send it out to them and them and them all at the same time. So any tower that's listening, you know, so you transmit here, well, it doesn't just go straight to the other towers. It has to make a big loop to come around and then it'll transmit to all the towers that are also listening on that same talk group. It, it says it does all that in half a second. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. So that's about average. Um, I don't know what kind of radios you guys have. Kenwood. Kenwood, all right. This will not apply. <laughs> but this is basic breakdown. They all look the same. I have an EF Johnson here. It's basically the same. The buttons more or less do the same thing here. So um, what we have here, you know, you can see we have our selector switches here. You have the emergency button. That's the don't push it unless you're in an emergency button. What that does is that sets an alarm off um, not only to Barry County Central Dispatch, but to the NCC who monitors the radio traffic. It sets an alarm off on their screen and they say, hey, we have an emergency alert on this top group in this county. And if we don't respond to it, if we don't clear it, then they start contacting us to contact other agencies to check on that, wherever that subscriber may be. Which the NCC doesn't know where that subscriber is. We're expected to know who has what radios. So. Just like VHF, you know, the rest are the same. Scan, you can select on off if it's programmed. Um, top displays, a lot of the Kenwoods have them. I don't know if yours do or not. I haven't mm -hmm. seen any great. Those are fantastic because then you don't have to pull it up. You just kind of look down and you can see what you're on. And the displays are reversible. They just have to be programmed that way. So it's on your hip. You don't have to try to read it as it's facing away from you. You don't have to flip your radio a little point. On the side, there's a couple different buttons. Um, the one dot button turns on your backlight, and then the two dot should be programmed for your RSSI, which is your strength indicator. That'll give you your strength rating as far as connecting to the tower. Kind of like your cell phone, you have a couple bars of service, or you have one bar or no bars. That's, that's what that does. It just tells you what tower you're connected to and how many bars of service you have. And that number ranges from I believe 30 to 145, 150. So, and in the middle, the push to talk, release to listen. I should put that part in the slide, but it was very important a couple years ago. Push to talk, release to listen. So, this, my only problem with the difference between Motorola and Kenwood is this future use button. The future use button has been there for over a decade. I 
thought we were in the future, we still have not used that button. So um, this does have a front mic. Um, and most of the uh, Kenwood radios actually have dual mics for noise cancellation. Um, but similar to your cell phone, when you're talking on the radio, you don't want to hear all the, all the vehicle traffic around you. They'd rather just hear the person. So every single radio has an individual ID code. Oh, I apologize for that. I'm going to make you listen to that sound again. <laughs> so every one of them has an ID code. That's how we identify you on the system. So the MPSCS will look for your radio ID. If your radio ID is not valid on the system, you don't get to talk. So even if you buy the radios, they still have to be programmed, and that's how the MPSCS knows who's on what talk group, who's bound to listen, who's not, can you transmit or not. So uh, the zone shows up there as one. It's not always accurate. A lot of ours started with a nine. So a lot of ours are 908 because we're in county 08, which is why once we switch to digital radios, all the talk groups generally start with 08 because that's our county code. So, you know, 08 fire is Barry County Fire. Um, 13 fire is Calhoun County Fire. So, the last four numbers are your unique identifiers. Um, if it ends in an even number, then it's a portable radio. If it ends in an odd number, then it's a mobile radio. So, if you guys need to troubleshoot a problem, that's the easiest step right there. What does it end with? We can figure out, kind of narrow it down. Okay, is that in a vehicle? Or is that someone that someone's carries on their hip? So, there's a lot of sound on here. I apologize. I usually set this up and my, my laptop's muted. Um, so just like your cell phones again, because it's basically just a computer radio, as you drive through, it's constantly checking and querying each tower for the RSSI. So as it drives through, it goes, hey, I have a really strong connection to this tower, I'm affiliated here. As you get closer to 1402, it's gonna disconnect from here and connect to that one. As the end user, you guys won't notice anything. Just like your cell phones, when you drive from here to Hastings, from here to Grand Rapids, it, you won't notice every time you switch a tower, it just does it automatically in the background. As you drive through, it does it again. So hopefully, Unlike VHF, which just transmits everywhere, this is supposed to be a little more friendly to use. You're supposed to be able to find the tower easily for the strongest signal. Um, at dispatch, we actually have what's called a voter, and that voter is pretty much a comparator, um, and that's kind of how we decide what tower you're affiliated to. Uh, it just picks the strongest signal. Okay. You know, I have this signal here and this signal here, which one's stronger? I'm gonna choose that one and retransmit to everybody. We have a whole separate equipment, like a piece of equipment on the rack that does that. Um, it's big, it's bulky, it's old. This just does it without thinking about it. It breaks a lot less. So, um, as far as the digital radio goes, again, similar to VHF, garbage in, garbage out. Um, for the audio on these, two to three inches away from your mouth. You know, the background noise, again, some of these have dual mics to kind of for some noise cancellation, but you still wanna be mindful that, hey, maybe I shouldn't be right next to the screaming person while I'm trying to transmit, unless I absolutely have to be. Um, you can no longer click the mic. Now, you used to be able to just key up the mic and you could actually hear it on the radio. You get that little second right afterwards of static. You can't do that anymore. If you get looping feedback, you're just too close to another radio. You guys know what that is? I'm sure everybody's heard it. Um, and then error correction. It is a weak digital signal. It's not much you guys have to worry about. Just realize, you know, it's two to three inches away from your mouth. It's the antenna straight up and down. If you can't reach anybody like this, try re-angling your radio. It was, it's way more important with the digital radios than it was with Again, we need that strong connection to transmit it. It can't just transmit like the static with a little bit of background noise. The system doesn't do that. So 
are some of the tones here. I don't think I have any of these programmed in. Nope. So I'll actually have to click on these ones. So these digital radios will actually talk back to you. As you're talking and you push the button, you have to wait for the channel grant. The channel grant says, okay, I'm now ready for your transmission. And that's what it'll sound like. Every time you key up your radio, you request, and that permit is that, you know, half a second of it going all the way through saying, what, what channel are you on? You know, what talk group do you want to speak on? What's your radio ID number? What towers am I looking for? Goes all the way back to the zone controller and back just that fast. So I am currently at My radio's not working today. So, um, as you go, when you click the button, it goes through. That means, okay, I'm ready for you to start talking. And if somebody else is talking on that same talk group that you're trying to reach, that's the noise that you get. That means, hey, don't talk. Nobody's listening to you right now. That could also mean that you, all of the other frequencies are in use and it can't pull a frequency to transmit your traffic. So if you do receive that bonk, just hold it down and don't let go. And once it's ready for you, it'll give you the channel grant and then start talking. What happens if, is if you let go of that button, because you hear the bonk, you're like, oh shoot, maybe I should hang up. You know, I'll just let go of the button. You get back in the queue as soon as you hit it again. You go to the back of the line. If you hold it, you hold your place in line, you get to talk next. So a couple of the other ones, uh, some of the feedback noises are out of range. So if you cannot reach a radio tower, every 10 seconds, gives you that nice long, just bonk, meaning I can't get that, that tower that's just over the hill. Your radio will also say out of range. It can't reach a tower. If you take off the antenna, it'll say out of range. It just, it can't connect to the system. It doesn't know what to do. Um, if the system is busy. Now I, again, I've been at dispatch for 10 years. I have never heard that system busy. That means the entire radio system is busy and it can't even check your traffic at the zone controller. It is just overloaded. That's a strange sound to me. Again, 10 years, I've never heard that sound. Um, because it is a digital system, Central Dispatch does have the ability, and other, other radios that are programmed, and they have a number pad, to actually type in someone's radio ID and have a private conversation with that person. So I can sit here and I can talk, I can talk to somebody but if I have a special, like a special message that I would like to relay just to you, I type in and those four high pitched beeps means I have a special message just for you. For that, you have to push, you know, the big button on the side, not the one nipple, not the two nipples, but just the big round button. Most of them are purple, others big and round. That's, that one will accept the private call and then all your communication from there on is just between those two radios. Now, until you guys specifically end that call by just you know, changing your channel or keying up on a different talk group, you guys are still holding on to that frequency. It just sets up that communication between A and B, and it holds that until you guys are done. If there's no transmission in a couple of minutes, it'll give it back, but please, when you're done, just release it. Um, the other one, 
Not sure if you guys have heard it. Some people like to give very long transmissions on the radio, very long dissertations for the scene, very long patient safety or patient updates. That sound means you've talked for 55 seconds. It's been time long. And that last tone was it, was the system just cutting you off, saying you are done talking. If you need to talk, key up again. But for now, you've held that transmission button for 60 seconds, let it go. So in the middle of your transmission, if you need to take a breath, just say break. You can let go of that button, it'll reset your time. It doesn't hold any sort of memory, so if you let go of it for half a second and reconnect again, it doesn't care. Your, your 60 seconds starts all over again. So, please don't be the person who gets that tone and gets cut off the system. So, it is important to note that Barry County Central Dispatch has crosstalk on. A crosstalk means as we're talking at any point in time, even if we are on 08 fire, and you guys are on zero eight fire. You know, we're sitting there talking to somebody, giving an update, and you guys need something immediately, it's emergent, you can just key up on your radio and talk. Everybody else will still hear central dispatch, central dispatch will hear you. It doesn't cut us off, but we can immediately end that transmission and acknowledge you and basically prioritize your radio traffic over anything else that we had going on. So just because dispatch is talking on the radio, doesn't mean that you guys can't. In an emergency, you can talk, we'll hear you, we'll stop. So it's an important safety feature. We thought that was important just to pass along. So um, some of the regional communication centers, um, I really doubt that you guys will have to have any sort of communications with them unless in an absolute emergency. But here they are, notice there's no fourth. That, that's on purpose, there is no fourth. We didn't just miss a number. So, and those are their call signs. If you pipe up on the statewide one, call station 10, someone will answer. Station 50 and statewide five, someone will answer. Statewide six, station 60, someone will answer. So, and here's the locations where some of them are. We're over here in district five. So we typically run on statewide five. Now, Barry County is the most Northern in district five. So as you go into Kent County, you're in District 6. I'm right here, it starts just at the county line, up in a District 6. So, and on here, those are just the state police posts. That's where they monitor all the statewide channels as well. So somebody somewhere, if you're on a statewide channel, will be able to hear you. So, and that's just a breakdown of where exactly that they are. So, here's the Detroit Regional Communications Center. They do monitor all radio traffic at all times. This is staff 24 seven. I don't know exactly who these people are or you know what they do. They acknowledge a lot of law enforcement. They also acknowledge you know, EMS and fire and anybody else on the system. But everything you say, again, is monitored. Um, there's phone numbers. If you guys wanna copy this, I do have a couple copies of the PowerPoint printed out still. These are the phone numbers just in case. Um, and again, 50 and 60 for you guys. Would it monitor from the all over the EU? They could, yeah. <laughs> we, at dispatch, we talk to Nagani frequently. Really? I, I don't know why it's broke down the way that it is, but we have to communicate with Nagani. I mean, we're all interconnected. It really doesn't make much of a difference where they are geographically. I just thought someone closer to us would actually understand the geographic restrictions. So, um, again, dispatch, like I said, we can, we can monitor everything that you guys say while we're talking. So if it is a mercy, you can interrupt. Um, emergency alert button, the orange button on the top of the radios, we monitor that. We have the alarm tabs open, if that goes off, it sets an alarm off on that talk group and you can audibly hear it. It just keeps going off until it's acknowledged. What it does is if, if you key up and you hit your emergency alert button, it prioritizes your radio. But it doesn't just prioritize your radio. Whatever talk group you're on, it prioritizes. So basically you now have emergency status 
And even if all the other talk groups are full, people are talking, as soon as you key up, they just boot somebody. If you have an emergency status, whatever you say takes precedent over everybody else. Again, even if someone else is on, let's say 08 fire talking, you hit the emergency button, you get prioritized. Your radio will override theirs. Now uh, that's a safety feature because again, it's an emergency button. So um, we can do the private calls. You know, we can do paging. If someone doesn't answer the radio, we typically send out a page and then just beeps the radio a couple of times, kind of lets you know, hey, someone's trying to talk to you. Um, oh, I skipped over limited talk group access. So again, this goes back to one of the earlier slides that shows the local talk groups. We don't program all those local talk groups into our console. Uh, some of the other PDs have a private channel. We don't, we don't monitor that. We don't have access to it. We don't listen to it. Um, I know that you know, a couple other agencies do. Consumers Energy is coming online um, into the 800 megahertz radio system. I don't know whether or not we're gonna have access to their talk group. That's on them. If they buy that talk group to put on our tower, we have to ask permission to use that talk group. So I don't know of any of our partner agencies that have denied us. We haven't specifically gone out and asked, hey, Hastings, can we have your private talk group? Hey, Sheriff's Office, I know you guys got a couple of them. Can we, can we monitor one of those? Hastings fired, can we monitor your private talk group? We haven't asked. We, we have the main talk groups and that's our priority. So everything else, we don't always have access to. Um, we can still patch. I'm sure you guys have heard it on the radio, you know, like patch the, patch the channels. So digital to digital, we can patch those. Digital to VHF, we can do it that way as well. Bless you. So we, just going to digital, you don't lose that capability. Um, and then again, we monitor, it says we monitor statewide um, MSP and 8-call-90. Um, it's used so infrequently. Our 8-call-90 we actually don't have at the moment. Um, we do monitor statewide 5 and you know most of the other county-wide talk groups. Um, what's that? And EMMD5. We do. EMMD5 we monitor and we, we answer for Jimmy Arger when he's out of town. We acknowledge his, his radio chat. I'm going back to the paging. Again, paging, it can be used for multiple things, either to alert you or just kind of general information like, hey, someone's trying to reach you instead of it just going, but. Let's see. Oh, it looks like that one's not working, so no one's gonna private call me. And that cell's not working either. So. I mean, you guys heard the, the private call earlier. Um, and again, you know, for, for paging, we have to know your radio ID number. So we can program that in. Um, and just type it in, press enter, and it'll send you out a page. If you answer it correctly, and that's very important, is to answer it correctly, then the conversation will be private just between two people. But if you don't answer it using that round or the purple button, and you just use uh, the push and talk button on the side, then you're just going back out over the general talk group and everyone's going to be able to hear you. So with a page, there's no response necessary. It's just for notifications only. So again, no other user can hear you. It says scanner land can, but they would have to specifically be scanning on that digital talk group at the time. So if anything, I don't know, HIPAA information or anything that you guys would like to transmit, but not have everybody else here. It is an option. Uh, we just typically don't use it for that because no one has ever requested it. So that's something that would, that would have to be discussed. You know, most of it just goes out um, over the general talk group. So the NCC, uh, they're the ones who we have to call if someone sets off an emergency alarm. Um, they can also help you um, enable your radios for the system. But if you lose a radio, they can cut it off for the system. If you don't know where it is, you don't want someone just picking it up and using it. If you have the radio ID number, you call them, boom, they cut it off. 
And if you find it again, you call them, they'll re-inhibit the radio. Uh, it's all digital, it's just like a cell phone. So again, activation of special event talk groups. Um, that, uh, let's see, I don't think we've used any recently, but you know, if you want to use like I-36, we call them, ask for that special event talk group, and they'll give it to us. Um, that's who dispatch ends up calling. Also, they're the ones who can program in um, G16. They can do the dynamic regroup. It takes about 10 minutes. So, and then if you just wanna know, like, hey, is this radio on somewhere? Is it listening somewhere? What top group is it programmed to? They can pull it up and say, hey, this radio with this ID is programmed, you know, with, with this ID number, it's connected to this tower and it's connecting to this top group. It's listening in on that. So maybe, maybe you want to know where it is. Hey, I think someone from last scene stole my radio and now they're listening to, you know, the law enforcement channels. Well, it's probably not anybody in this room. You guys are probably still monitoring the top groups that you need. So that'll kind of help narrow it down. But again, they can't actually, it's not like a cell phone where you can ping it. It doesn't have that kind of capability. It can just tell you whether or not it's on the system or and what tower it's connected to. It kind of gives you a couple mile radius. So this, again, was a couple years ago, but it shows all the radio communication traffic that was happening at one time. There were over 10,000 radios connected to the system. 38 were actively talking at the same time. Average length was 3.9 you know, 3 seconds. But of the 10,000 radios on the system, only 38 were transmitting. So that kind of shows you how switching to a digital system, we can actually cut down on the number of frequencies that we need. Because before, you know, in theory, that would be 10,000 frequencies that people would need. You know, everybody has to transmit on their own frequency. Um, Lighten fire, Thorn Apple fire, Caledonia fire, you know, Wayland fire, everybody gets their own frequency. But now that we all share, you know, you can share a set group, all 10,000 radios using 38 frequencies. Yeah. We, we have a, a much larger pool than that. Kalamazoo alone has, you know, I think they just cut down to 14 or are in the process of cutting down. So that, that greatly expands the availability of frequencies for other communications as well. So, mutual aid, that's available as well. Um, again, zone F. Um, if you guys had radios, you know, show you how to change zones. It's fairly simple. Typically on the screen, it says zone up, zone down, and you just push the corresponding button. That cycles through in alphabetical order. So um, again, if we need anything, you can contact the RCC. Uh, repeaters are available um, on like 8 call 90 so again that still has to go through and hit the tower but if it has a D after it you guys remember what that means direct direct right so you just turn it into walkie-talkie mode you don't have to worry about those so um, oh and there we go and then direct mode for the TAC channels those are available. You guys don't have to ask to use them. Just pick up the radio and use them. You know, I've used them at the dispatch center. I don't know how many of you guys have been out there. Um, we have the dispatch floor on the main floor and down in the basement is our uh, server room. And so running wires back and forth, I typically run a call 90D to someone upstairs and they can tell me, you know, hey, the wire's through. Hey, I'm shoving the wire down. We can communicate back and forth without having to talk through the tower. So it saves time, just local things. Hey, bring this equipment from the truck. Sure, you don't have to tie up any of the frequencies on the tower. You don't have to tie up the talk group. You guys can just speak to each other that way. So, and then again, it says squelch levels manually set on the radio. Um, those are all pre-programmed in. Uh, annual maintenance on the radio, every couple of years you send them in. They'll do some adjustments and they'll also readjust the squelch at that time. So, and that's for those, those direct mode talk groups. So, scanning on the top, you have the selector switch. 
you know, typically says A, B, or C, and that's, that has to be programmed for scanning. Now, that scan list is kind of up to you guys on what exactly you want to scan. And if you only want to scan, you know, fire, like 08 fire, a private talk group, 08 EMS, and, you know, maybe one other talk group, you can program that in, add it into your list, and they can program all the radios that way. But in order for them to program the talk groups, you guys have to be authorized to use that talk group. So in order to, to use that talk group, you know, and have it programmed in, that just goes back to general programming. Now also, if you guys are scanning, the way that the system works is for hyper-efficiency. It will only transmit on the towers that are listening. So if no one is on the Alto Tower listening to you know, 08 Fire, it's not even gonna transmit any radio traffic on 08 Fire. As soon as you guys hit 08 Fire and head north, and you can hit that Alto Tower, it will start transmitting because someone is on that talk group affiliated with that tower. If you guys have a private talk group here, let's just call it TTES. And you know, all the towers that you guys will connect to can transmit TTES. But if you guys never connect to any of them over in Eaton County, they'll never transmit them. So if you're on scan and you head over that direction, that's not your primary talk group, you're just monitoring it and nobody is specifically monitoring that talk group. And you're just kind of frequency jumping and talk group jumping, you won't hear it because that tower won't transmit it. So scanning works only if someone is on that radio tower actively listening to that talk group. So, also important to know, um, well, obviously that says system efficiency, but also important to know that you can't talk on every tower. So again, that goes back to the concentric circles. You have your local, you have your county-wide, and you have the statewide. Not all county-wide are valid throughout the state. They're typically surrounding counties only. So if you guys do a long, let's say Thorn Apple EMS has a long transport, or transport, uh, I don't know what's far away. So let's just say over to Detroit. You're not gonna stay on 08 Fire, 08 EMS the whole time. You can switch to, um, let's say, Statewide 5. Very central monitor, Statewide 5. If you key up on there, we'll hear you, we'll acknowledge you on that talk group. If not, as you drive through, you know, you're, you're taking up one spot, one frequency on every single tower along the way as you go just to hold on to that talk group. So this is kind of a, a thing. Um, simulcast, we're looking at going to simulcast. That's currently what the VHS system works at now. Communicates all towers, same time, doesn't matter who's listening and who's not listening. We're switching from, um, from our current setup, our trunk system to simulcast. So. It's slightly less efficient as far as power um, and use of the frequencies. However, with all the talk groups transmitting at the same time, I'm sorry, not all the talk groups, but all the towers transmitting at the same time, it doesn't matter where you are, you can still hear it. No one has to be down here monitoring 08 fire for your scan to work. You know, no one has to be over there listening to 08 fire. When you go that direction, your scan will still work. But again, that's, it'll be countywide only. So just about everything else in this class is countywide only. Now, as soon as you go outside of the county, you know, that's when, if they're not a, a simulcast system, that's when that will cease to take effect. So um, emergency, you know, portable and, and mobile radios both have the orange button. I see your mic has it as well. So you have fancy mic. To, set off an emergency. <laughs> I believe they're not. Yeah. Um, and dispatch ours aren't programmed either. Um, that's user preference, whether or not you guys want the emergency, actually, whether or not you want the emergency button program. And again, that's monitored by uh, the NCC and Central Dispatch. Anytime someone uses it, they get priority on the tower. So um, we do have the RCM up and running, which is the radio control manager. That's what kind of monitors that. Um, without that, then nobody can use the emergency button because, well, no one's there to monitor it. And the NCC does not wish to take that 
solely upon themselves. So, uh, there's two types of emergency, the emergency alert and the emergency call. The emergency alert is the initial push of that orange button. That, that will just send out the tone to dispatch, it sets our alarm off, it flashes red on our screen. And that says, hey, there's an emergency. And then the emergency call is what happens when you actually transmit over that. And that could be something as simple as, you know, dispatch was an accidental push. You know, or it could be an actual emergency. But as soon as you hit that push to talk button, again, it elevates you and that channel, again, that talk group. Um, and that's when it elevates to an emergency call. So. How long does that department last? Until it's reset. Correct. So if you hit the emergency uh, firefighter down, you know, you or you have an entrapment scenario, you're trying to get them out, you hit the emergency button, again, you get priority over everybody else. So as you're in there, if as long as we keep it up, we can silence it at dispatch. So it, it won't just keep beeping in our ear, we can just silence it, but keep it up there. And as, you know, as long as that stays up there, as long as you don't turn your radio off and back on again, or press and hold that orange button, which is the proper reset of the emergency alert, then you will maintain that status until it is cleared either you know, by dispatch or by the radio. So, so those four tones will sound, they'll go on and off, and at that time, yeah, the only, the only people are really um, you and dispatch. At that point, everybody else just gets overridden. Um, the emergency call, again, that's when you press the button, it elevates that. We do have the radio IDs. We also have what's called a radio alias manager at dispatch. So if you have radio ID 908-3134, we know because it's an even number, it's gonna be a portable. And we also know that, okay, that is programmed and that is owned by Thornapple EMS or you know, I don't know how you guys are gonna just throw Apple Township Emergency Services. If you guys wanna program that in as a specific person's radio, or you can just do TTES Radio 1 or whatever, that's what we'll see, as opposed to always seeing the, the radio ID. So say 908-3234, we'll see you know, TTES Radio 1. They're already, they're already programmed that way. They are? Yeah, I sent it in last week. Okay. Or they should be, they should be. So I have like Medic 52, yep. Medic 51. Yep, and then yep. personal, people have personal radios, all the officers' radios are are allocated with their, their information. Great. Um, that gets sent over to dispatch? Yep. Fantastic. Yep. And either myself or their deputy director will enter that in. And then every time you key up, that's what we'll see. We don't have to see a radio number and guess who it is. <laughs> see a radio ID pop up on the screen that says, hey, this, this person just transmitted. Well, who belongs to that radio? We don't know. So I appreciate that. That makes it a lot easier for us. So there we go. And then canceling the emergency alert or the emergency call. Again, the proper way that we that we request everybody remembers is to just press and hold the orange button until it beeps again. Don't just turn it off and turn it back on again. And please do not jump to another talk group. If you jump to another talk group, now that talk group is also an elevated emergency mode. And then if you switch again, we're also that talk group is an elevated emergency mode. And we can only have so many elevated emergency modes. Where, wherever you are, that is where the emergency needs to stay. You said you never heard of switching busy beat. Yeah. I, I haven't, and I would rather not try it, but I am curious. Do you have to cancel no. it on every one of the talk groups? Yes. We have to go through. We have even if you're if you're on one and cancel it, we still have to cancel it on all the talk groups. And going back to one of the earlier slides to test your memories, do you guys remember what zones Barry County is in? Three. Three. Mm -hmm. Three and one. Oh yep. So if you happen to hit a tower in zone one, we also have to reset that as well. So <laughs> We have to jump all over the place because you're flicking through buttons. So this is why we kindly request that you stay on one talk group and only have you know, that one elevated. So 
And then again, just hold it till there's a steady tone. That'll cancel it. Let us know it was a false alarm. Obviously, we'll know it wasn't if we've been communicating with you. So, um, this if batch will notify you. It does open your mic up too, does not? No, it does not. Does not. Okay. You still have to push the top. You still have to push down. Yep. So, um, dispatch. You know, it says how do you cancel? No, you know, dispatch and the NCC. No, just cancel that part. Just notify dispatch. We'll call the NCC for you. If you guys have other stuff to worry about, and then. We talk to them so frequently. We can answer the phone. Hey, Ron, that's Eric. Yeah, we had an accidental emergency activation. Yep. All right, have a good one. And that's our conversation. That's, we unfortunately talk to them frequently for accidental trips. So, um, if you guys do have an emergency, we can actually, at the dispatch center, elevate your radio. If you're, even if your orange emergency button is not programmed, we can actually activate an emergency on that talk group. Um, and that elevates that talk group. Even if you guys can't, or if you guys don't want it, but we know that something's going on, no one's opened their mouth, we can do that for you. Just request it, or like I said, at our discretion in an emergency, we can set it off, and then you can request at any time for it to be canceled. So that's also at, at everyone else's discretion. Most people at dispatch will not do this on their own. Most of them are afraid to do this on their own. They don't want to get in trouble, or they think that it's a really big deal because then the NCC gets notified. It, if it's an emergency, we'll gladly do it. No one's afraid to do it if someone else requests it. So just keep that in mind. So, yep, yeah, and again, sets them top priority over everybody else. Um, some of the outages, you guys heard the site trunking noise earlier. That was right before the system busy. I still have never heard. Um, <clears throat> site trunking just means that the site, to go back to Barrett County, we have site 5802 over near Nashville. If that site somehow loses communication, if it's microwave connection can't connect um, to the zone controller, we're in what's called site trunking. That means it can't talk to any other radio tower. It can only talk to anyone associated to that tower. So you basically turn yourself into an island. So if that site goes down and you guys are up here connecting up to the Alto Tower, no one down there can hear you because the towers can't talk to each other because they have to go through the zone controller for that. So if that happens, um, then we'll lose the wide area. Obviously, we'll lose connection with the zone. And you'll actually see it on your radios. It'll say site trunking. It'll keep, it'll keep making noises at you. but. It'll just say site trunking. There's nothing that you can do on your end for that. I know it's annoying, and no, dispatch cannot make that sound stop. The only way to do that is to turn off your radio, which then we lose that communication. So it'll automatically clear once it's back online. So this is kind of a close up connection of some of them. Um, you can see these here. You know, they're all interconnected, but some of these legs do end. 1802, 1804, see how they cut. If 1702, 1704, you know, since 1704 is the last one on the leg, if this one goes down, then 1704 has no communication with anybody else. It lost its only means of communication. They're in site trunking. They can only talk to everybody within that site. So it does happen. It typically happens, uh, dispatch tries to do something, you know, every two years or so, just kind of a site trunking event. Uh, we have the, uh, the state of Michigan come and they actually come to um, the dispatch center. And then we set up the whole scenario. Okay, let's see if the system works as designed. Mm -hmm. And it's not just to test or mess with anybody, it's to test the system, to make sure the system is still working as it should. We're also working on interconnecting these because 1704 could connect to 1804. Then it doesn't matter what happens over here at 1702, it still has another route. So um, we're working on more interconnectivity so there's at least you know, another failover route. So and then if something happens over here, you see everything that connects to that one 
the yeah, it trickles down. It's just a lack of interconnection because everyone connects to one, um, you know, to one site to the next to the next to the next to get to the zone controller. And we don't always have a direct link. Sometimes it's a couple of hops to get there. So what happens? Go back to G. Um, you know, go ahead, change your zone. Go to zone G. G event one in site trunking conditions will then be automatically activated. That's where everybody will go. Dispatch can monitor you. Um, you know, whoever else can monitor you. Unfortunately, we actually did a, a site trunking test a couple years back. I think it was 2017, and we failed terribly because our system was set up with redundancy. So dispatch was still perfectly fine. And it was responders in the field who were not. So we had to go through and we had to fix that issue. So now in a site trunking event, it works properly and we can still communicate with you. Typically we'll say go to G event one. Um, in that case, we can actually patch. So if we need to, you know, we can set up a patch from G event one over to, you know, OACOM. And then everybody countywide can communicate if everybody goes to OACOM. And that, that's kind of Barry Central's workaround. That's kind of how we try to still maintain our connectivity to everybody. So, and then it says as a last resort, try the ATAX for scene coverage. You know, it basically turns those back into um, an analog radio. And you can still always hit walkie talkie boat. Those, those TAC Ds are, are fantastic for that. So whatever you guys do with it, you know, develop a protocol, just, you know, dispatch has our own and we're trying to work with everybody else. So what we do, we try to pass along to everybody. You know, it's not saying you have to do it that way. It's just to let you know, hey, this is how we're doing it and everybody else is doing it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna work with you the best that we can. So now zone trunking, that reminds me to silence my phone. Um, zone trunking, again, that's when the zone controller can't talk to another zone controller. Zone three cannot talk to zone one. Then we're in zone trunking. So everybody within zone one can still talk to each other. Everyone within zone three can still talk to everybody else. You know, but if zone one goes down, our zone controller can't talk to any others. We're basically just kind of expanded that island to everyone in zone one. In that case, there is absolutely nothing the dispatch can do to help you. We are all in the same boat together. There's also minimal need, unless you're traveling county to county to county, you know, unless you're traveling across the state, there really isn't much of a need for dispatch to help you out. It's out of our hands, unfortunately. Um, we don't really have a good workaround for that one. Um, again, Sorry, I hit the button. Um, you guys will be notified, but you probably won't be impacted. You can still talk to Kent County. You can still talk to everybody else in zone one. So, then here's just a quick example. Zone six loses connection. They're on an island. Five, four, three, one, and two. We can still all talk to each other just fine. We just can't talk to that one. So, you see here, oh, sorry, zone three is actually what I was referring to earlier. I apologize for that. Um, so zone three, you know, here we can talk to everybody but zone six. So um, a fail soft just means that the IntelliRepeater um, fails at a tower. So um, it takes two of them to handle any sort of trunk communications. If one fails, then we go into a fail soft mode. I don't know that we've entered one of those lately, but it's still, it, it's good to know. Um, so no matter what talk group you on, and like if it goes into a fail soft, talk groups are out the window. It sticks to frequencies only. And just says, hey, whatever you say, everybody's gonna hear. I don't care if you're on 08 com, I don't care if you're on 08 lean, 08 special event one, I don't care if you're on, you know, a way fire or, you know, our call. It doesn't matter. The, everybody's just going to hear each other. So at that point, it goes right back to um, kind of a VHF mode where it's frequency only. So 
So everybody receives those. And in that case, we'll be pretty busy. So um, if you do have any error numbers on your radios, not everybody at dispatch can help you. However, there's this great search engine. I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of it, uh, Google. Google has every single Motorola, Kenwood, EF Johnson. It's got all those fail codes. So if you have an error number, it can narrow it down pretty good as to what it is. Um, if you have, uh, say, error code 62, then it can probably tell you, hey, your transmitter's broken. You can still receive, but you can't transmit because it, it can't actually push that out. So. Um, if you get a failure, then you know that's obviously a bigger problem. So what to do, you write it down, and then you contact your radio techs. So it's a CECOM or Crouch or uh, Radio North, I don't know, whoever it is, whoever monitors your guys' radios, they should be able to help you out with those codes. So um, again, there, there's not much that, you know, the dispatch can do for you. Um, the, they really don't know most of these codes. The only one there who would know many of these codes would honestly probably be the emergency manager, Jim Yarker. He, he's got a lot of reference sheets he can sort through his papers and he probably has them somewhere. Um, so but initially what you can do, now I'm an IT guy, turn it off, turn it on again. <laughs> You'd be surprised at what that fixes. Just turn it off, wait a couple seconds, turn it on again. If that doesn't work, power down the radio, take the battery out, try to power the radio back on. Hold down the push talk button for 10 seconds, turn the radio off, put the radio back in, turn it back on, and that might clear up some of the other codes. That's actually cleared up a couple of failure codes for us. But if it reappears, then it's probably not safe to use in the field, and that's when it needs to go in. So, uh, very important especially with all the new digital technology. Please turn the battery, I mean, please turn the radio off before you remove the battery. It's still trying to draw from the battery. Uh, there's, a, there's a computer chip in the battery itself. Um, that could get damaged during the process if you don't have the radio off. So, um, it, it asks, would you turn a computer off without shutting it down first? I know a lot of people who say yes to that. So I try to just, that one. Um, in order to maintain a good battery life, don't you know just leave it on the charger for days, months, weeks at a time. You know, take them off, cycle that battery through. So that that kind of helps it, you know, stay fresh. You know, the cycles they kind of regenerate. Uh, the Impress batteries also have a recondition function, where after so many cycles and so many charges, it will recondition itself and try to bring itself back up to as close as it can. To the initial charge. Um, they still degrade, you know, they, they go down little by little every year, but when you recondition it, it tries to get it back up at least above 90. So, um, you know, here's the typical, you know, charger. I don't know if you guys have that. It's just a multi-bank charger. Um, it's, it's the same for Kenwood as it is for Motorola. You know, they still recondition the batteries. There's still the charging errors. Uh, if you don't have it in there properly, or even if the battery is overheated. So, um, and last, don't get angry. Don't start yelling at people. Truck radio is different. We fought a lot out of dispatch when we first went to went to the system. Uh, we fought over the, the top grant. Like we fought over, you know, quite a bit of the stuff. It's just everything's new. You got to relearn it. It's it's the same but upgrading, which some people would disagree with, but it's as close to upgrading as we can. So if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to call out to dispatch. You know, um, just ask for me. They'll transfer you over to my phone. You know, leave a voicemail, shoot an email, whatever you need. Um, I can get back to you within a couple of days. Um, if say anything other than that, there's also MSP or wherever you're ready to And then here's just you know some of the training talk groups. 
Again, these have to be programmed in to a lot of them. Um, some of them, I think there's a G event somewhere. There you go. G events, those are in. Those are. You, know, you can use those for training. Um, you know, and again, just some of the buttons. Up top, there is encryption. And then, you know, encryption on, so no one listens. That's why it exit out. And then wide open communications, just the open circle. Berry County does not have any encrypted talk rooms. We don't actually have the capability to encrypt them without incurring a large fee and swapping out a lot of equipment. Um, so at the moment, we don't have any. So uh, just some of the general icons on all the digital radios. You have your RSSI button right here, and that'll read out the numbers. I would also show that just like a cell phone. Um, you know, you have your scan. On your mobile, it's just a triangle, and, you're, and that's programming mode. So if it's got the little things out, that means you're currently setting which ones you want in that scan talk room. Um, and then on the portables, it's a square. I took some of them out because they don't apply. A lot of the, the vehicle ones, again, it's just general concept. You know, you got your power button, your home button to get back to your home screen. Um, your dim button kind of cycles through between backlight, no backlight, and super bright. Um, you know, volume knob. Most of them still have the emergency button over there. Um, the mode knob and then the four-way switch. Just kind of select different options. Um, it just depends on what you guys want to have programmed and what you guys have. Um, here's some of the older ones. Um, I don't think I have any Ken ones in here. This is dispatch's screen. So everything that is in your radio and more, here's our MCC 7500 console. Uh, this is basically our interface to the statewide radio system. So you can see here we have OAE 911, you probably can't see in the back, so I'll explain it. We have VHF EMS. This is all of our VHF paging buttons here. You know, so we have, um, you know, our thorn apples, our free ports, we have Thorn Apple All Call, Thorn Apple EMS, Nashville EMS, um, and Nashville All Call. So we kind of try to color code them just a little bit. Um, and, you know, Mercy is blue. Um, That's just kind of how we have our talk groups laid out. But up top, we have a couple of tabs here where we can actually access more information. Um, tornado sirens, dispatch sets all those off. Uh, we do that from, from our console here. Um, additional talk groups, that's where we keep all of the um, you know, all the OA special event channels, all of the, um, you know, just various ones that people use. We can actually communicate directly with PennUp, the Road Commission, MDOT. You know, we can actually communicate with all of them that way. Um, over here on this side, this over here is the activity log. And this is where you can see what talk group was last communicated on. And I can actually just select this and talk. So if you guys are on statewide five, like you should be, if you're going way out of the county, more than one county away, switch to statewide five. Um, we can just select that and talk back to you, or we always keep this up at all times. Um, up here, we can actually, we can select anything that's in white, means we have it selected at the same time. So all that goes directly into our ear. Anything that's not goes into a, um, the external speaker. So up here is also where we patch. So we, just patch two of these together and you know just have a little square a blue square in the corner and they'll say hey these two are both just acting as one um, we can do that as well as these are all of our digital pagers here so you can see you know well actually you probably can't see I apologize for that um, you know all, all of our uh, pagings we have you know Yankee Springs and Wayland and Bellevue and Martin and Layton gun planes so all of those we can we can direct tone with an 800 um, we're still working on that but the more radios that come online the more frequencies we need to accommodate those radios and those extra talk groups that they come with so we're still obviously growing into the digital radio as well a lot of this is you know still VHF um, and just kind of 
break it down because I thought it was important to know the difference. When I keep saying digital rate radios, it's 800 megahertz radio system. You know, VHF is currently, we're in the 150s. Um, so we're here, 150 megahertz falls within this range. As soon as we go to 800 digital radios, we're down here into UHF radios. So they are not the same. You can't transmit on VHF from an 800 megahertz digital radio. You have to have a dual band for that, and this is why. Because they are separated by an extensive amount. You go from 150 to 800, you actually cross over from very high frequency to ultra high frequency. So, and then your phones typically are down here at SHF, which is super high. They're, you know, uh, three to 5.4 gigs. Um, do you guys have any questions for me? I know it was long. I know it was super exciting. I appreciate you guys containing your excitement. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. No questions? Great. Nice and easy for me. I appreciate it.